<laughs> hey, yo, what's up? This is Ice-T, representing for Hype Magazine. Stop playing. Hey, what's good, everybody? Welcome to another live session with the Hype Magazine. I'm your editor-in-chief, Jerry Doby, and today I have distinct honor of being one of the few people to get my friend, Mr. Paul Ring, founder and CEO of Bungalow Records uh, in California, to do an interview on video, you know, and so... I, I cherish this moment and I'm going to um, make sure that we get all the juice out of the meat because who knows when he'll allow media to reach him again. I appreciate, I'm honored. Thank you so much um, for considering me trustworthy enough with your story. Welcome, Paul. Paul Ring. Hey, good morning, Jerry. Honored to be working with you and uh, hey, happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to you as well, my friend. We're working it on a Sunday and we're working it on Father's Day. You gotta love it. <laughs> you know what? I am I have locked the door, the access to my office building so that my kids can't come down here and uh, <laughs> say, what are you doing? I'm I'm having a conversation with my friend. We're bragging on the inspirational story that is bungalow and how it started so you know i know it but could you please tell the audience from the inside looking out you know a bit about your background and what inspired you to create bungalow records i um was a recording engineer jerry and producer um and uh quick backstory um when i was a second engineer uh, that meant my job duties were making drug runs and cleaning up everybody's, you know, mess. You never got to touch the console. And uh, and one day I happened to be at the studio cleaning up and Capitol Records called and they um, they needed some studio time. Nobody was around. I volunteered. And uh, nine months later, that album went triple platinum. I got um, a Grammy and uh, and then everybody wanted to work with me and thought I had the secret sauce. So um, that got me going. And then the next almost 10 years, I, um, you know, I had a lot of big hit records working with, uh, you know, artists from Bobby Caldwell to Smokey Robinson, um, just just really went on a roll. And um, and then it was at that time that. Joe Isgro came in my life and gave me the opportunity to learn the business side of things. And um, I became uh, president of Joe's label, Private Eye Records, which was with Universal. And Private Eye had massive artists, Rick James, hmm. uh, James Brown, uh, Gap Band, Cameo, Bonnie Pointer, uh, Bootsy Collins. We were... We were a formidable company and uh, gave me instant respect as an executive because I'm heading up Joe Isgro's label. And um, anyway, uh, Joe taught me the, the game incredibly well. He's my mentor and somebody I, I love and, and uh, wouldn't have had the opportunity to launch Bungalow 23 years ago if it wasn't for Joe. Uh, Joe's training, Joe's mentorship. And so um, I launched Bungalow because Joe decided to shut Private Eye Records down and get into film and do other things. And then that opportunity came to me from Universal. And in 2000, we launched Bungalow. And here we are 23 years later. Man, 23 years in a ever-changing industry. Um that speaks to not only business acumen, but intestinal fortitude to stick it out. <laughs> so the personalities and, and situations and political climates that can impact the industry and the, the product that's being put out can, can definitely be a, I mean, what type of challenges uh, did you face in building and maintaining a successful record label in the industry? 
Jerry, it's been challenging. You know, we we woke up one morning and music was for free. <laughs> and then, um, you know, Spotify kind of started to put a Band-Aid on it with ad-driven uh, version and being able to somehow figure out how to monetize this new free platform. But it's, it remains a, a big challenge, as we all know, to, to have the artists especially being paid what they deserve to be paid. Uh, and then even as an indie label, uh, it has been challenging. Every every penny really matters. If, if you're if you're not one of the three majors that control 30, 40 percent of the global market share, where those pennies really add up, uh, kind of like a Walmart thing, you know. I mean, they they can really sustain with that kind of market share. But when you're a smaller indie, it it really just takes very close um, money management and, and um, you know, just do, doing things much more carefully than we, we could be more cavalier in the old days and really go for, go for things that now are much more restricted. You know, the business side, I, I obviously one of the things really important now was important then, but it's more important now to understand the business side um, when you come into this. So as an independent artist, having someone like yourself, who's, you know, you've got the Grammys and talk and talk about, you know, just to back up real quick, being prepared for the moment, being prepared for the opportunity. When that phone rang Capitol records and he was there and go, let's get it. <laughs> and, you know, there you go. Pops off with a Grammy. That's good stuff. You know what I mean? Um, but knowing the business end, you know, obviously when you became an executive, it, it the dynamics shifted and it's a, it's a key element. How do you feel about the changes and are there any like really major changes to the fundamentals of the, the business part? Uh, for me, you know, Jerry, I, I grew up in an era where a and r was really going out there and discovering new talent by what you heard and what your heart was telling you and and you could sign an artist based on those instincts and today a and r is really almost all analytically driven we can really believe we've got the next m and m but if those analytics aren't telling us that then we have to wait and sit on our hands until until that artist is able to start moving the analytics to a point where um, they become somewhat bankable. And, and that, to me, is one of the hardest changes that I've had to deal with because I, I hear incredible talent and I want to move forward and be able to sign them and bring uh, investors in because that's what you know bungalow has always done and everybody wants to just see what those analytics are and they're not listening you know it's not moving them in the same way so um, I'd say that that has been the biggest challenge for me okay so it's gone from talent to bean counter as the determining factors as to what moves forward yeah. I got you and it's, it's proven out you were around during another shift. Um, we're talking about Hip Hop 50, the 50th anniversary of hip hop, which will be in August. And of course, you know, shout out to the Bronx and all that, but the West Coast, we put it in too. And, um, you know, as things were shifting from the uh, Biggie and Tupac era to, you know, here comes DJ Quick, Sugar Free, and uh, mm -hmm. NWA era. You know what I mean? Um, Mac Ten, Westside Connection, he who banging record. You know, <laughs> we we were we were making noise, and Bungalow was an important um, depot actually for uh, West Coast hip hop. Can you talk to me about you know the the defining moment when 
you know, Bungalow became home to some of the most iconic names coming out of, you know, the West Coast. Well, th thank you for acknowledging that. Um, again, the the uh, the backstory, which is what's important, is that uh, towards uh, the end of, of Private Eye Records, before Joe shut it down, we had started to move into uh, hip hop and uh, the streets had respect for me because of who I worked for. They revered Joe. They loved Joe. And so when Joe shut the company down, they um, they were still talking to me. And, and a guy named Tony Lane, who I have tremendous gratitude, uh, Black Tone, Laneway Records, he, he really believed in the launch of Bungalow and he was the one responsible for bringing over DJ Quick and Sugar Free and, and gave Bungalow that, that street credibility it needed to, to launch. And um, Jerry, it was amazing to have the opportunity to put out a DJ Quick album and to sit in the studio with Quick. I mean, he is to this day one of my favorite producers and writers and and then watching him and Free working together. Um, I was just really blessed and I was lucky to um, have have Tony Lane bring bring those projects to me. Man, you know, I have watched, you said you were in the studio with Quick and, and Free. I have watched some of their IG clips and at their age, they're hilarious and pulling skits and stunts in the studio. I can only imagine what you experienced with them when they were younger and had more energy. It, it was it was truly incredible. I mean, Quick is a genius, um, amazing producer that um, you just, and again, as, as a producer and engineer, I really appreciated and, and could appreciate what he was doing in there. So um, yeah, I can't, can't say enough about how uh, lucky I was to to have that opportunity because uh Tony Lane could have taken that anywhere. Do that. Do that. Well, you know, I think that just I've known you for some years <laughs> and uh I actually met uh Joe Iscro before I met you. Mm -hmm. I was a talent coordinator on the Welcome to Death Row uh documentary. And uh I've had a couple of visits back uh when it was when Private Eye was still there, and then I got a chance to meet you, and sit down and and have a meal, and not being a journalist, not you not being record executive, just two people who got a chance to meet and sit down and get to know one another. That was incredible. I thought that, you know, I could see why the the other fellas um, felt comfortable with you. Like, okay, he's he's a no nonsense guy. He's not playing any games and. Um, I think one of the things that stood out as I did my little background research is that nobody ever included Bungalow or Paul Ring in any nonsense about I'm not getting my money, my business wasn't done correctly, my record didn't come out on time, spotless, which in this day and age, my man, is an amazing thing. Jerry, I appreciate that. Um, you know, 20, 23 years, um, I, I think that it speaks loudly to be uh, exclusively distributed with Universal Music Group, truly the most powerful, greatest company. I, I really, uh, I've had such tremendous support through the years from the uh, the people up there and um and you don't sustain with a company like that for 23 years if you're running game and 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 not doing good business. So, you know, Bungalow through the years has had, you, you're never going to please everybody as a record label and distributor. And and so we, we've had our bumps and bruises. But I think what does speak loudest is, is you don't sustain 23 years over there unless you're doing good work at the end of the proverbial day. It's amazing. You know, I, I recall asking you, um, how do you feel like Bungalow Records helped to shape the sound of West Coast hip hop? And you kind of deferred to the artist. 
you know, as they made the sound and you were just able to enjoy getting some credit. Enjoyed the ride, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but as a as a funnel, as a conduit for those bards of the street to get their message out and their music out, kind of are responsible and we have to thank you um, because I put West Coast hip hop up against East Coast hip hop pretty much any day. I think we have the same caliber, the same quality, same entertainment value, and we might be a little more clever in telling the stories. That I'm just saying, though, a little more personality. I'm West Coast all the way, Jerry. <laughs> Amazing. I mean, you know, Dre, Snoop, Quick, all these guys. Just man, I listen to their records all the time today. They're, they're timeless timeless records um one of the missions for you said was i want to be the best place for an artist to come you know um you had some things that made you different from everybody else what you know paying for the master's creation and you're basically leveling the playing field because you respected them as artists in their life's work can you talk to me a little bit more about that uh, yeah, you know, Jerry, uh, again, having come from the creative side, I really always was focused on on making things better. And when Bungalow launched back in 2000, um, the playing field wasn't where it is today. You know, it, things have, have changed quite a bit. And my big focus was to make sure that these artists got the ownership of their masters, which was huge because in the record business and still today, when you pay for the masters to be created, then then you want to own them as, as, a, as a label. And I didn't do that. Um, Bungalow has always allowed the artists to get their masters back and, and have the ownership of their work. And um, it, it was... And it has been a challenge for me because financially, that's where a label's catalog can be very valuable. If you retain ownership in all these great artists' records, then 20 years later, you have the big check that comes to you. Right. I didn't do that. And, um, you know, there, there are moments, again, just having real talk, uh, Maybe I think about that. I, I regret some of that because uh, it would have been nice to get uh, a bigger payday that, that I sometimes see other labels that have been around a while are getting because they retain that ownership. But um, all in all, I'm, I'm proud of what we did. And I do think that we had an impact because people were taking notice on what we were doing all about integrity and and integrity is doing the right thing even when nobody's looking and you know in the business end of the music business people are looking but they don't know what they're seeing oftentimes so it could have been easy for you to you know put artists in a george clinton kind of position you know what i mean where he yes his project now what is it flashlight 13 uh, where he's still trying to get his masters and things as one of the most simple. I mean, integrity. This is why this man and I clicked, you know, all those years ago. And um, I'm proud to call him a friend. I'm proud to call him, you know, kind of a mentor as well, because I don't know the answers to these questions from the inside out. And uh, my first witnessing of a billboard unboxing was at the hand of Paul Green. So, you know, I was young. I've got a my first experience, you know, through him. Some of the biggest names in West Coast music got their first experience at, you know, major promotion, major platforms, radio exposure and things like and distribution. You know, Paul Green, he's he's an important part of the West Coast hip hop history. And um, as we're doing this Hip Hop 50 series, interview series, I could not have left him out. 
and I really appreciate the time that he's taken. Um, Thank you, Terry. Thank you very much. I, now that things have changed, and, and we talked about um, the process where it's pretty much analytics now. How many hours back then when you were still things were coming in on one on quarter inch tape, one inch tape and debts, you know what I mean? How much time did you spend in the listening room um, as, and how many, well, how many hours were probably millions of hours of music that you've heard um, during the development of the West coast hip hop sound? I, you know, Jerry, I mean, I listened every day of my life. I, I must tell you, I probably have, three to four hours minimum of music that I'm listening to just because I it's it just is my passion mm -hmm. and makes me laugh makes me cry um gosh I was just just uh yesterday watching a tiny desk concert uh babyface was on there mm -hmm. playing all his hit records Shante Moore was singing and they're just man I was, I was just in tears it was just so moving so I mean, I I just have always had a a full full day or night of of hours of listening to music and just put the headphones on and enjoy it. So nothing has actually changed for me there. Mm. I'm, I've just always always got music going. Okay, what about the signing process now for Bungalow? Um, you know, like you said earlier, back then you go to the clubs, you'd hit the showcases and and it would be an ear thing. Now it's a data thing for the people that you want to invest in these artists, but are you still going with your gut and saying this person is, is viable? And then you, of course you do your due diligence on the social media and everything else. It, I, boy, I want to say yes. <laughs> I would be, yeah, I wouldn't be truthful. I'm, I'm sadly, following that road now of, of analytics so you know bungalow will um, put some artists out but it will really be more of watching to see if if we want to jump in and jump in based on seeing that that they actually have an engaged fan base that's really been the biggest education that i've been giving the artists is to really understand that today in, in 2023, you're not chasing streams, Jerry. That's that's not the number. Mm -hmm. It's it's the analytics behind it. Are people saving the record? Are people sharing the record? Uh, are people creating playlists around it? I mean, those are the things I do when I love a record. The first thing I'm doing is saving it, sharing it with you. Uh, that means I'm engaged and, and I'm I'm a real fan that can be monetized. Going out there and getting yourself on playlists you don't belong on because it's not the right demographic and getting what we call passive streams, one and done, it actually hurts you more than it helps you because you went out and you got a couple of hundred thousand streams, but nobody shared, nobody saved. So your analytics are really bad. And that means that that uh, like a batting average, you're, you're batting really low. It's going to be hard to trigger that algorithmic support that that you so badly need with um, platforms like Spotify. So um, we we usually need to really get the artist in that lane with us to start really focusing on real fans, real engagement, because we can do more with 50,000 streams and a high engagement rate than you can with uh, 200,000 streams and nothing's really happening. So engagement is where's that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I think everyone started realizing that on social media, but the artists were not connecting it, that it's the same on the, on the DSPs, the, 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 the digital partners. You've got to, uh, get engagement going on there as well. Okay, okay. I um, I don't think I just clucked. I did just cluck, but I think that um, 
you you mentioned that the greatest challenge is streaming. Spotify putting a Band-Aid on it. Title, I think, pays a higher percentage or something like that now. But um, I was listening to Snoop the other day talk about <laughs> how do you make money of this stuff? You know, somebody explain to me, Spotify, <laughs> we need answers. Yeah. How do you have a million streams and you make a hundred dollars? Yeah. Something doesn't make sense. So what tools does Bungalow, and I know that sometimes you're, because I, I met you with a label owner uh, under Bungalow and uh, when we did the unboxing. And so you're mentoring these people as well with the information that you've gained over 23 years as a label, but also by as a, a person who keeps up with the current trends and, and measuring sticks of an industry, when you mentor them, how do you deliver that information? Are you straightforward? Do you have to, is it got to be long form? You just go like, look, here it is, empirical data, bam, bam, bam. You know, Jerry, I think it's uh, an artist by artist situation based on the chemistry and and, you know, just wanting to uh, communicate in a way that they'll, they'll um, understand it and grasp it. So it, it's, it's different, right? There's no, it's not cookie cutter uh, at all. And, um, and, you know, we're constantly looking for solutions and ways to help. Bungalow has been really active in, in the NFT side of things. And I guess what you'd call the 3.0 um, movement because I, I think there's some solutions there for artists. A again, artists that have an engaged fan base that they can take with them. That really uh, the the uh, Web3 opens up a lot of ways to monetize and do things yeah. that can be beneficial. Web3 is insane. I'm learning. I'm going, you know, there's no way for me to answer 200 emails a day and spend you know, three hours posting and then spend another three hours just trying to learn about this Web3 space, you know, the metaverse and owning. I didn't know I could buy property in the metaverse. I'm like, <laughs> I could have a whole ranch with horses and all kinds of stuff. I'm like, you know, that's that's serious. Um, and depending on what uh, platform you're you're looking at, it can get pretty expensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I have a few NFTs uh, where I, you know, honestly traded my writing skills for NFTs that I like. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll write your piece on your on your project, but you know, I want that mad hair. You know what yeah. I mean? And yeah. I I want it from Gonzo. I don't want it from one of your side guys, I want from the main design. And so I believe in that um, world. I just don't know how, how it works. Do you have a, a large team that helps you work through these situations or are you really close to the, close to the chest? Uh, I have a small team of uh, people who have been with Bungalow from inception. Uh, Vicente Pina, uh, my senior VP, been with Bungalow almost the full twenty three years. Um, you know, he's 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 uh, my right hand and very uh, astute on these things. So I rely on him. Uh, and and again, I have such a close relationship with key people at Universal. I get a lot of support from the great people like Frank Hensley. Um, man, I can call Frank. Linda Curry. Or, I can call Frank or Linda Curry anytime, seven days a week when when uh, Bungalow needs something. It's 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 incredible support and uh, respect that I I I get from key people like that. So uh, I say that to say that that I've been able to um, keep Bungalow mean and lean. And and part and parcel because of the great support from Universal Music Group. So from the label to the artist, 
from the streets to the suites, so to speak. This man that we're talking to, Paul Ring, Grammy Award winner, probably got like multiple diamond albums that he hasn't talked about. Very um, humble, very a man who just expresses his gratefulness to be a part of this this thing we call music and um, helping people because not only is he just it is deeper than just getting your music on the radio, getting your music distributed. This man has helped for 23 years, helped people feed their families off their craft. You know, and in the history of, you know, the 50 year history of hip hop, that story hasn't rung true from coast to coast. Because, you know, people usurp instead of respect. They would rather go for the buck rather than legacy. Yeah. And, and it has degraded sometimes the product. But here we have a man who stands on it and says, you know what? We're going to do business, but at the same time, I'm going to make sure that you have the education and the tools and resources to make it happen. Bungalow records, 23 years. Come on now. That's good stuff. Um, I just have a couple more questions. I'm respecting this. Happy Father's Day again. You know, I appreciate this is like super, super duper special because, you know, it's a Sunday, for God's sake. And, you know, we're sitting here chopping it up. And no, I didn't shave. No, I didn't brush my hair. And I don't care. This is my friend. Like, we could be fishing and I'd be fine. You know what I mean? So the most... What are you the most proud of? And I know that you're going to pawn it off on the ability to for the to have some great artists and things, but you have contributed to the fabric of music. And so stepping out of your normal humble mode, come back to me two or 30 years ago where you're like, I'm great. It's okay to say I'm great. What are you most proud about of your career with Bungalow? Um that's a it's a hard question, Jerry. Um, I I think that really just being able to um, sustain as an independent label all these years, I'm I'm very proud of. Uh, there were a lot of people out there that never would have thought Bungalow would would have made it and still be going uh, 23 years later. I think. Um, you know, facing all the the challenges and ups and downs of 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 the industry, and and so I think that that I'm I'm most proud of uh, the fact that we're still here talking and and we're relevant and we're still truly um, helping artists that that want to be over here with us. I think it's key to point out that the mindset about bungalow was the same as the mindset about hip hop. Oh, they're not going to make it. They're not going to stick. There are all those, these detractors. And here he is, Mr. Paul Ring, Bungalow Records, 23 years, Hip Hop 50. And we're talking. I think that's sexy as hell. I don't <laughs> know what anybody's going to say. But I think it's really cool. Um, you've already answered the fact that you still love music to the point where you can just vibe out to it. Um, do but in there, do you find yourself analyzing the music still? Or do you just, just go into the vibe tripping and just let go? You know, Jerry, um, I miss the studio days a lot. I miss the creative days. So I think I just get into the zone of just picturing myself behind the board, even if it isn't the music that I recorded or produced, but just imagining being in that session and uh, I do a lot of that because I, I really, you know, there, there was a sacrifice once I went to the executive side. And and uh, and and so, um, yeah, I, I think that that I just really get into the creative stuff and I'm not really wanting to listen to music to analyze, but just to enjoy it and get back into that moment of creativity. I feel you. I don't write music, but I, I love it. 
And uh, I heard this song from Sadat X yesterday that I had like on repeat for two hours as I was working. It was the same song like, that was really greatly crafted. When you could get into, you know, get past being jaded as a music industry person and, you know, picking it apart. As you said, the transition now is from sound and quality necessarily to in engagement and stuff like that. But to just get it in and go, wow. It's the power I can't get away from it. The power of music and it, it's so powerful and and uh you know just in in closing one of my one of the things on my bucket list and i've been uh begging mr isgro to help me because he's on the film side is i want to do some music supervision i really want to put music to film and um Joe is is helping me now to get that done. He he's bringing me on to do music supervision, and um, and that's a great thing for the label because now I'll be able to take some of the music of these developing artists. At least this is my goal, and give them that platform within a a, a soundtrack and a film that can really be a defining moment. In, in launching their careers. So um, I'm kind of excited that I'll actually get a chance to do a little more on the creative side. Okay. I see that you've got some things working for like Tubi and things like that, yes. which is turning out to be a great uh, platform. And um, you're amazing. I only have one last question for you. Um, you have witnessed millions, hundreds of thousands of songs, sounds being created, been there when things happened, you know, what has been your most, the wildest music creation moment that you've been witness to? Like somebody just said something slick and somebody else joins in, you're sitting at the lunch table or a domino game and people just get up and go into the studio. Do you have a wild moment like that? That was like crazy creative. Um, I, I think it, if I look back on things, th those moments took place more when I was a recording engineer and producer and you'd have those magical moments in the studio with an artist and, and, uh, many times not even realizing it in that moment, but then later when the record became a, a big hit and then you're, you would remember the magic that, that you created with this artist. And I mean, yeah, th those, those are just very magical personal moments. And, and I, I would say that I haven't had too much of that from the executive side, uh, but definitely, uh, from the uh, engineer and production side, for sure. Look, man, Sunday morning, Father's Day 2023. Mr. Paul Ring, he is the founder, CEO, and driving force for 23 years behind Bungalow Records, which gave our West Coast artists some of the most amazing opportunities to become international superstars. They did it, they did the work but he provided the platform. I will give credit to the artist as he would, saying that you created the move, he backed your play, and great stuff. Grammy Award winner, probably got more awards than we could talk about, and uh, my friend. And I really appreciate you taking this time, and thank you. Um, last, last, close out and tell us about your take on uh, the 50th anniversary of hip-hop, being a part of that and what you're looking forward to, and how they can reach out to Bungalow. Uh, I can't even believe it's the 50th anniversary of hip-hop. I mean, how is that possible? <laughs> uh, still trying to wrap my brain around that. And um, just, just again, honored to, to be anywhere in that mix with all the great names that, that we could go through. So... Um, you know, thanks for 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 putting us uh, in this, Jerry, and 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 acknowledging uh, Bungalow's part in it. As uh, I really do appreciate that, and um, and yeah, I mean, I think that I got it. 
All right, everybody. <laughs> Night Magazine Live Sessions, Paul Ring, Bungalow Records, 23 years, almost half of the life, commercial <laughs> life of hip hop. The man has made a difference. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And we are out. Thanks so much, Jerry. Bye. Bye, everybody. As an artist, we should reflect the time. Why are you so talented? Because I'm black. Why are you so amazing? Because I'm black. It's really important that we build characters so that people understand their story matters. Two Chains and I both are just really into good food. And when you know you are royalty, you will only aim in life to be royalty. We're doing it right now. I don't give a damn what they say about me. Yes, I called your ass out. I know I shouldn't be saying this kind of Shout out to Hype Magazine Network. Shout out to the Hype Magazine Network.